Do you know who? Do you know who could explain this better? Yeah. <laughs> There's more logic going on in whatever the f that is than I mean. Yeah, <laughs> I don't right know. Now. I've just come back from being away for a few days, and it seems obviously something Ariana's made. It. <laughs> Let's go. What is up, YouTube? It's James from Robin Henry Watches. We're going to get straight into uh, a special video because we're filming way earlier than normal, which is why we're back here again and not in the studio. Back in the, the cupboard. In the cupboard. The Whoa, cupboard. into the library. This could be anything. They've seen behind the scenes on the last one. This isn't so bad, although there is a lot of child stuff around. Shh. Anyway, we're here today. We're here to gathered here today, <laughs> gathered here today to talk about <laughs> the death of Amiga. Uh, no, uh, it also is to talk about the Amiga Swatch um, Moon. Oh, I can't even moon like Moon Swatch. The Moon Swatch Speedmaster, um, which has just been announced. Was it yesterday or the day before? For us, it would have been the day before, and it leaked a little bit earlier than that. So we're about two, three days behind. Right. Okay. So. I mean, if you're watching this video by now, you already know what it is. So it's a collaboration between Amiga, Swatch, it's a... Which is basically a collaboration uh, uh, between Amiga and themselves then. Yeah, I mean, I was just about to <laughs> say it's a replica of the of the Speedmaster. Well, it kind of really is, I it, guess. Um, it's a toy Speedmaster. The case proportions are the same at 42 millimetres. Um, it's made of bioceramic... Uh, otherwise known as swatch plastic. It's plastic. Yeah. Um, it's, it's got it's, it's what, got any... ceramic to one part plastic, I think. No, I think the other way. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I believe I mean, so. It's two thirds ceramic, and then the remainder is plastic. Um, thickness is thirteen point two five millimeters. I don't know why it's so thick. Look, it's basically a Speedmaster, but the, they've moved the dials. They've dipped it in like Teletubby colors. And the movement, is there any details on the movement? It's obviously it's quartz. It's quartz. I'm, I'm going to presume it's an ETA quartz. Yeah, it's got Because obviously that again yeah. comes under the swatch umbrella of companies. Yeah. Um, it's going to be 200 pounds or 250 Swiss francs and probably dollars fairly similar. So for 200 pounds. I mean, for the price of one Speedmaster, you can get the full set. Yeah. And it's, yeah. And uh, so it's being released tomorrow, uh, Saturday, which probably by the time this comes out will In be an odd selection a, a few of stores. Days uh, yeah, well, it's Swatch Boutiques only, two per customer. Right, so, um, this is what happens when you film things in advance and then things happen um, in real time. So, let's go over it quick first. Swatch changed their policy. Uh, release day comes, they basically sh themselves with the outpouring on social media uh, and the web. They're like, oh, sh this is bigger than we thought it'd be. Like, you think... Possibly the biggest fiasco Putting ever. out Speedmasters at 200 quid. I know they're not the same, but that's what they were trying to push. So of course it was. Um, so they changed it to one per customer, uh, not two per customer. Um, and they've also said, you know, wait, 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 wait. It's not going to be... It's not limited. It's going to be any online sense, soon. It, we're going to put it online. Release date comes, or should I say before release date, uh, came up. And suddenly we're all seeing pictures on Instagram of people queuing up the day before overnight. And you're like, oh, this is going to be bigger than we thought. Release day happens and it just, it's like a megaton f nuke goes off of everyone, like the whole world, everyone in the world wanted a 200 pound, you know, moon swatch. Um, I had people messaging me at 5 a.m. that was stood in the queue in London and I'm just there like, f good luck. Like Japan um, but boutiques closed, people getting stabbed. Yeah, so in New York, there was footage of a fight and allegedly someone getting stabbed. London, they shut down most of the stores before most people got them. We saw uh, videos of scalpers uh, trying to sell them to the queue. I mean, Three like, grand on the door. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, who the f would pay three grand for these things? I mean, well, that's the other thing. Chrono, eBay me the the price Let, that some people let's are not even go there it's sickening yeah i know i mean listen the, whoever's paying those prices you're a moron well, someone paid us what was almost we yesterday was it 60 grand yeah no one's paying that though. no one's paying that i mean you can go on ebay completed sales to get a 
bit of an accurate picture. You know, there have been some going at a few thousand, but Swatch have made sure they've really kind of pushed out and said these aren't going to be limited. Whereas originally they said they never said they were going to be limited edition, but they did say they were good, there was going to be, you know, limited production of them. They're now trying to distance themselves from those comments to, you know, they don't want anyone else getting stabbed and having to shut stores down. It wasn't a great look. Don't get me wrong, the publicity was awesome. Let's not even talk about the quality control issues. There's suspicious bleeding of colour and all yeah, sorts. Yeah, there's, but... well, I think we now know that the bioceramic basically means it's made in, in someone's mum's kitchen with vegetables yeah. um, and they leak. There's other issues, but what I would say, I'm because we're not going to get into it, I would just say this, what do you expect for £200? Yeah. And they've got, the retailer's got to make a margin, the production, so... And we do get onto this later, you know, it's, we're critiquing a £200 watch. Let's see what happens on the quality control, I think. Uh, I'm not too fussed by it. For 200 quid, what do you expect? Anyway, the next few minutes are, are all about the, the actual opinions on the watches, so, uh, yeah, stick around. Let's... I think the best place to start is let's talk about it from the, the Swatch angle. Now, I think for Swatch... It's absolutely awesome because they've got all the brand cachet of Amiga, you know, into one of their products. Even though they already, they, they, they own Amiga. So, they, so uh, do you know what I it's think? It's like spiting your... Do you know what my face? theory is? Because I, someone was messaging me yesterday and they were like, why do you think they've done it? Like, well, I was like maybe a theory is, right, Swatch saved Amiga and loads well, of other brands. Swiss watch, Swiss watch making. Yeah, pretty much. Arguably. Arguably, single-handedly, <laughs> in the seventies and eighties, they saved them all. It's like buying them. That's why you've got these great brands uh, under the Swatch company. They say that maybe now that Swatch hasn't been doing so well recently. Don't get me wrong; they're still a profitable company in its mm -hmm. own, yeah. your own brand and the overall group. But maybe it's a bit of, you know, Amiga's got to save Swatch now. Yeah. And here's here's another theory. I'm not sure if it's the case, but maybe it was a case of you know. Uh, the Swatch company just saying, F you, you're helping us out. Yeah. And Amiga's like, maybe Amiga didn't get a say in it. It's like, it's like when you like take a deal out with a loan shark and they're like, yeah, yeah, just repay us when you're ready. And then like six years later, they show up at your door with a knife to you, like your wife. Mm -hmm. And they're like, right, you remember that deal you made? It's time to pay up. I mean, for <laughs> Swatch, it's awesome. It, it's great PR. Um, it's obviously commercially, I don't think we even need to discuss how well it's, it, it's going to do exceptionally mm. well. It's, I, it's just going to exacibate the aftermarket the again, only, though. The annoying thing is, which I'll probably touch on later, but it's just it's being swarmed already by flippers and scalpers. Yeah, you're going to see um, this on, on Chronos and If you're a genuine times. enthusiast, you're going to have anxiety trying to get this watch because it's going to be very hard, because it's going to be full of, uh, let me put it this way, a bunch of which are just going to buy it to flip it. I mean, I don't know if you saw some of the posts on eBay yesterday yeah. uh, that were coming around social media. I mean, somebody was a joke. And, you know, people are already posting the watch up. They don't even have it. Um, a lot of that, some of them have been taken down, but one of them went up to like, a, I'm sure it's like nearly a hundred grand. I mean, yeah. what a joke. I mean, I think people were just like deliberately bidding just for a joke. I mean, I said to someone, I might bid a hundred grand just to... Just Be that to... guy who spent a hundred grand on a plastic toy watch. Hell no, I ain't paying up. Um, so yeah, for Swatch, I think it, it's awesome, uh, £200. Right, let's look at it from the Amiga side now. What do Amiga have to gain with this collaboration? Well, I'll try and look at the positive aspects first. Uh, obviously, it's getting their name out there. There's that saying, like, uh, you know, there's no such no, thing. Publicity is bad publicity. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so people, people are talking about it. Um, one other possibility of positivity, it might bring people into watch well, yeah, it can be a gateway well. watch, can't it? Exactly. But it could also be a, a, a killer as well. That could be, you buy it, think it's your gateway, and then you're like, oh, well, I've got to speed master now. What I don't, do I don't think you'd ever would be satisfied with just that, personally. It, dep well, it depends who it, the gateway is for, I think, I think it's a gateway. Um, is it going to be the gateway for people who only want to spend that much? And they, well, they might, you know, someone who is, you know, doing well for themselves, but hasn't got into it yet might buy one and be like, oh, actually, then they might look into the Moonwatch, the Speedmaster history and think, actually, I want to buy a real one. Mm -hmm. But the problem is going to be, are those sort of people even going to be able to get one of these watches? Yeah. The other thing... That's a very good angle. I've not thought of it on that front before. I see a lot of people talk about them being gateways, but if you can't get them, they're going to be a gateway. Oh, I mean, can you imagine the price he's going to be on the aftermarket? I mean, this is going to be more like a collector. This could be like a novelty for the other you know, thing Amiga is, addicts. Amiga obviously were somewhat considered in it because 
um, it's considered it because they, they they did two little cool things for collectors. They did the dot over ninety on the bezel, which mm. is you know a nod to the vintage uh, speedmasters and collectors. And the other thing on all Amigas, right in the middle, you know how they etched their logo. So they put the but S on there. But they they put it swatch. <laughs> but you know, just thinking about it, um, I can't really think of what else is good for it for Amiga from their angle. Because you know what, one of the first things I mean, in terms of brand spread. Again, it's not even going to be brand spread because, again, the majority of people who buy these are already going to probably. Listen, have they're meetings. really harnessing the in-house, you know, you, um, you, you know, know, power. You're not really putting more Amigas but, into people's houses because the only people who are going to buy these are going to be existing. At, at this point, it feels that about yes. eight, probably about sixty, seventy percent of the people that buy these are going to be buying them to flip them, yes. which is which is a shame. But unfortunately, that's the world that we now live in. And the watch market that we live in, which is a load of bollocks, and I wish it would go back to the way it was before because it was a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. um, in terms of the, the, the downsides of this for Amiga, um, let me start first with if a ceramic Amiga Speedmaster, they're about an actual, a, an actual right. one, a real one, yeah. they're 10 grand, mm -hmm. right? Now, I know that if you put the, the, the moon swatch here and the Speedmaster, you know, the, the real one here, I know that there's going to be a visible difference in quality. But so how much? Well, that's the thing. I was watching Watchfinder how much? and what they were saying is the big thing, and I totally agree, is it's going to be how does it feel? Mm. It looks wise, whatever. I, read, I, think it, I think it will feel swatchy. Yeah. And what I mean by that is light, very light, because there's, no, there's going to be no weight in the movement. Yeah. But the point being is they've made a ceramic case another ceramic case here. Why is there a 10,000 pound difference? Yeah. And don't be telling me it's all in the movement because nah. these mechanical movements, uh, which they make in house, the actual production cost is a few hundred pounds. Yeah, um, it's not the so I think plastic. What it might do to some people is they might just be like, oh my God, we're being ripped off. Because yeah. we are, listen, the production cost of a watch is, realistically, it's gonna be a few hundred pounds, mm. but they're selling it for 10 grand. Admittedly, there's all that back of house, you know, overheads, you know, like marketing, research and development, uh, logistics, uh, yeah, all of that sort of stuff, HR, staffing, all that sort of stuff. So I know that's not the true unit cost. Um, well, even then, you're talking, let's but, say a thousand, doubling. And the, and the other thing is, if, if you own a Speedmaster and you, you've ponied up the money, oh, you've actually got your on to it, like, if, if, it's a bit it's a bit of a bitter pill to swallow maybe isn't it especially if you've got one to sell right now like you yeah. marking this shit up you can get one to tomorrow at 200 pounds and yeah. you've got one don't, for how much don't buy this at 4300 it's one <laughs> it's 4100 pounds overpriced um do i on that point though do i think it will affect the um values of speed masters i don't think so if if they were going to keep the moon swatch in continuous production, then yes, there would be a danger of that, but I don't think so. You're probably I, going to have the tiniest little subset. I guess as well, you know what who... the problem is. It's like, what's going on at Amiga? Like, are they okay? Like, what? Well, yeah, it feels gone like from they're dropping in the leagues to now having this weird identity crisis. That's what it feels like. It feels like a midlife crisis. Well, yeah, they, they had the identity crisis with Rolex, and now they're doing this. Yeah, it's a bit like. Like I don't know, just imagine this. Now, <clears throat> some people are going to say, oh, it's an amazing marketing move. And, you yeah, know, it, well it, 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 it probably is, but... There's going to be some weird people out there who get a Speedmaster because they can't get a moon swatch. But could you imagine if Rolex or Vacheron or Audemars Piguet or Patek Philippe did this? You would just be looking at it and be like, what? yeah. what's wrong? Yeah. Like... But again, yeah, this is are. part of what Amiga's always done, is they've always sat in that accessible space still, whereas Rolex, through the bullshit, the ADs, the bullshit in terms of the, you know, the pricing in the few recent years, it's like they're in two different planes. Yeah, but you wouldn't see all the Mars Piguet do this. You wouldn't see no, Vacheron. No, but AP's not that accessible either. Okay, what well, I'm saying is, like, Amiga is, like, the, the average person could aspire to that a lot easier than they could aspire to Rolex. Yeah. And so Amiga said But do you not think space. that maybe, you know, Amiga is successful because they pull like this? And this, I think this is a new level for them. I totally agree. Um, it's just bizarre. And I, I do think that it's good that it's successful because, it, on the positive side, I hope it will bring more people into the hobby. Mm. As long as it brings but, but will in... It? as long will as it? I don't know. Because well, the people not. they could bring in are going to miss the releases. 
And we know every swipe is going to be empty by the end of you know, All the rolly wankers, you know, like Batman, Schmurf, yeah. you know, wanting to, you know, flip stuff constantly. Um, you know, oh, I hope they don't do that with these. The Moon Swatch, the Sun Swatch, the Mercury Swatch. I guess they're all going to get nicknames. All the colours, like the Uranus. <laughs> in the, you know, the nod to the tip. Of, it's the tip in there's the blue. Let's just, let's there's just the, call there's it the that. Apollo. You've basically got the Alaska the project. Ult, they've though. got an Ultraman. Uh, yeah. I mean, I guess this. Would I buy one? The reality is, if I could go... If we had one today, I'd it, buy one. Yeah, I would. So just, just for the novelty. There's no point right? me, you know, like outright hating on it. If I could walk five minutes down the road, you know, uh, to the local Swatch uh, seller, yeah, I'd buy one for, for £20 for sure. I'd probably buy two. I'd probably buy three. Just because you know we what? could. No, you wouldn't because you can't be. Probably I know what that. There but do you know what? I would probably buy them to give to people at like their birthdays mm. and Christmas to try and like get them in. So they'd be like, oh, okay, I this get it. This is cool. See, that could, um, that's a very good... But okay. I guess then if it, if it stayed out that long, it really would be like, why would you want to own this? Yeah. Or that. The, what I'm seeing is like, it's not hate or love. It's confusion. Yeah, I, mean, I would say that's where I am. I, could, I can see the benefits of it, um, but I'm not fully behind it either. I just think it's, it's not like I want to be completely snobby and be like, what the f*** have they done? Like, they're ruining the Speedmaster. And, oh, they shouldn't be letting these peasants have yeah. them. My friend was going to gatekeep it. Um, I'm going to gatekeep it. But I, even I get it. There's a little bit of it. It's just a... It's a bit I mean, they could have... I mean, the other thing is, to be fair, they could have charged more than £200. They could have charged £1,000 for these. And I think they'd still be just as popular. Yeah. Hands down. So they haven't been super greedy. I and mean, I think be, they And fair. it would be more accessible. If they charged a grand, they, you know, tomorrow, you know, the Swatch Boutique is going to be empty by 4 p.m. Oh, it's it's going to be empty by at, 10. At least it would have lasted and enough I, for them to be gateway watches. And I had a few people contact me yesterday saying, oh, I'm going to the boutique tomorrow. Do you want to get one and we'll split the profits on it? And I was just like, listen, thanks for reaching out, but hell no. Get me one, though, and I'll double it. <laughs> Well, no, they're not going to sell me one at the normal price because one, they know that they can flip it, and yeah. two, they're going to think that's what I'm doing. Yeah. But I was just like, no, I don't want any part in it. Um, and know, anyone who flips is going to come off badly on this. It's look, just look a, bad, it, so. I, it's annoying enough that I'm I already do a few um, modern Rolex, which are obviously at market price, but. As I've said many times before, it's not me flipping them for huge profits. I'm only making a tiny margin because I'm yeah. buying them at market it's price. It's almost you're, you're facilitating people to get them. Essentially, yeah, with a tiny margin, there's, there's not much in it for me. Like, literally, we're, we're talking a few hundred pounds. Yeah. Um, it's not, it's Which rich. barely even covers costs. It they're, doesn't cover costs. They're just easy sellers. Um, that's why I do it. Um, and they're great watches. But, yeah, I don't know. It's going to be it's gonna be odd. I mean, if... Somewhere down the line, they're available at a reasonable price. Yeah, I'd like to try one, but I, I don't think so. I really hate the strap. Yes, yeah, so like, what do they call from it? the front? The it's Velcro. Great. So it's what it's similar to some of the ones that you used to get with, um, you know, this Speedmaster because yeah. this comes with something like that, similar with that. Yeah, um, they're calling it spacesuit. Where I've that before. It might in the pictures they look okay, but the reality on your wrist... It just, it sticks out too much. It's the sort of strap you were wearing when you were like eight or nine. Yeah, exactly. And you didn't know how to... That's like the sort of strap you had on your trainers. So that that would, I presume that you can swap it straight out as per a normal watch. So that's must be able what, to. That's what I would do. I'd put <laughs> Stick it on a real bracelet. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no, I'd, I'd find like a cool rubber strap for it. And NATO would, would do well with that. Yeah, NATO would do well. Um... So yeah, it's all a bit odd. I'd like to, I'd love to see the quality of the dial in person mm. as well. I would just, the I want to. Pictures don't look great. I want to know if you're going to pick these watches up and be like, oh my god, we're being ripped off on the other ones, or you can tell, like, yeah. like normal. Like, I think the major thing when you have that pity stomach feeling is going to be in the weight. Like, how plastic does it feel? Oh, it's going to feel. I mean, with a quartz movement in it, it's going to feel. Yeah, but there's going to be a. The, I'd be surprised. You know, Even the feeling of the pushes when you like, you know, yeah, when you, when you be... do like a good chrono and you push the button, you can feel in a really good chrono. Yeah. Like you get that sort of response and it's instant. Yeah. And there's no lag or there's no, you know, kind of this, you know, it's a real. Yeah. You're going to feel something a bit weird. So yeah. Listen, get in the comments. Tell us what you think. Um, oh, ooh, battery covers. Battery covers. What do you think about the battery covers? Oh, Because that's very divisive. 
Well, I actually thought, I mean, listen. Some people think it's great for collectors, some people think it's awful. No, I think it's all right. Listen, at the end of the day, you know you're going to need access there, so uh, it makes it easy and they've done something with it, so it made sense to me. Yeah, I don't know. I, I mean, mean, at the end of the day, uh, I mean, there's, there's right. hardly much point with critiquing, critiquing here like a £200 watch. Yeah, like, that's true. It is what it is at that price. The fact that you've got the meager on the dial. That's huge. I mean, yeah, I mean, can you imagine, like, Cartier never would stoop to this level, you know, but can you imagine You Cartier? say that. Well, their, their stooping low was the tank must yes. at two and a half grand. Um, and that wasn't stooping low, but they it obviously had a massive air of quality about it. Makes you wonder, would someone like you to do this? They're in a similar sphere to Amiga. I don't, just never say never. They've done some wacky shit in the past. I don't know. I suppose, uh, to be fair, look, we're, we're, we're ignoring the obvious here. We're Tudor, about already, company, Tudor but... already teasing their releases, so there's loads more new releases to come. So. Yeah. We are talking about the company who did the Playcroft, so. Right, so, yeah, listen, get in the comments, let us know your thoughts, good, bad, hate it, love it. If you can get one, tell us about it. Yeah, listen. Tell me how it feels. Send me one just to borrow so I can do a review on it, and then I'll, I'll send it back. Well, even, yeah. You can trust me. Really? Um, that, that hung around for a bit too long. That's a bit ominous. Yeah, listen, you can't trust me. Anyway, if you are interested in the Moonwatch and you want, you know, the then, real deal, we have this. Oh, God, it feels so good. It's still got that sound. We've had to take the front off anyway uh, to photograph it again. Um, it is sticker. It's got the back sticker. It's got the class sticker. It's got bracelet stickers. It's still got the swingy tag. Um... It's complete full set. It's January 2021. It's the 1861 movements of the one that's just been discontinued. Uh, so you've got the old style bracelet, you've got the 1861 movement. It's a complete full set, outer, uh, outer, 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 inner suitcase. Uh, so you can always use it. It's got Paper all the accessories weight. with it the paperweight, the um, loop, the, the straps, and all of that. I really want that loop. Um, £4,300. That's pretty much bang on. It might not have the loop by the time it gets What its to retail uh, was last year. Um, so way under what the new model is being retailed for, which is five, five something, six. five, six grand. Um, and it's brand new and unworn. So it's an awesome deal. So check it out on the web shop, robinhenrywatches.com.